making a Stuart model steam plant. This one is part 36. Fitting a globe valve to a Stuart water gauge and making a boiler mounted steam turret using PM Research steam valves. The taper plug type steam taps that would normally be fitted to the bottom of a water gauge like this always seem to leak. With the exception of the ones that I normally buy from a company called 21st Century Steam. But anyway, in this application I'm going to use a globe valve. The thread in the bottom of the water gauge fitting is 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch. And all I have to do to complete this job is remove the fitting, screw in the globe valve with a bit of Loctite 542 and the job's done. I will eventually fit a long copper pipe to this water gauge blowdown valve to safely transport the water to the drain that is going to be fitted on the baseboard. In amongst all the bits and pieces sent to me by the customer were quite all to PM research parts and I really do like these valves. Once I paint the hand wheels red, they should look very much like the full size, only smaller. In this clip you can see where I'm going to fit the whistle, on the end of the turret block as shown in this clip. I don't know what type of brass this is that I'm going to make the turret out of, but it's very heavy. The first thing to do is to mark it out ready to drill the holes for the taps, and also I'm going to mark out the end of it to fit the steam whistle. As usual, my marking out is terrible, but at least I know where I need the holes to be. Here's a good tip, whenever you fit a piece of metal into a machine vise, whether it be on a milling machine or a drilling machine, tap it with a soft hammer to make sure it's fully square when it's sat on the packing. As always, I'm starting off the job using a centre drill, and as you can see, using the centre drill, I'm making quite deep centre marks in the brass. After I'd centre drilled the three holes that I need for the taps, now I'm going to drill the hole right down the middle. And in this clip I'm using a piece of hardwood to make sure the metal is perfectly vertical. As usual, a centre drill first. I'm centering the hole deeply to guide the twist drill bit. After the centre drill, I'm going to use a pilot drill, which is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Here's a drill bit and I can monitor its progress through the work by the swarf leaving the holes. After drilling all the way through with the small drill bit, I then drilled the hole 7 seconds of an inch in diameter, for two reasons. One is its tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch, and I need quite a large diameter hole through the center so as not to restrict the steam flow. Once the drill bit broke through the third hole, I used a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to thread the end. Next I refitted the piece of bar in the machine vise and drilled the three holes to fit the three steam taps. Once again I used 7 seconds of an inch which is tapping size for quarter by 40 threads per inch and here I'm threading the first hole. This is a good time to mention that when you make steam turrets you need to make sure that you have enough thread to accept the steam taps and as you can see by looking at the end of it there's a good depth of thread in the turret itself when the time comes to fit the three steam taps. It's worth mentioning that I drilled the centre hole all the way through to accept a fitting to allow me to mount it to the main steam tap on the boiler. Time for a quick tip. When you select the size of block to make a steam turret, make sure the block is large enough to accommodate the threads down to the centre hole. I could have used a smaller block but then the hole down the centre would also have had to be smaller. There are three steam taps and two of them are going to be used for the double 10 as well as an S50 steam engine and I've put a third tap on there at the request of the customer so it can also power other engines that are external to the steam plant. With a small hole down the centre this could restrict the volume of the flow of steam. In this clip I've turned the part over in the machine vise and I'm threading the other side. Once I'd finished making this part, I used my airline to blow away all the chippings from the inside of it. Then I cleaned up the part on my belt sander, although in this clip I hadn't done the end bit. Here I've fitted the whistle to the end of the part and you can see what it's going to look like. The next part of the job involves making thread adapters for the steam taps to be fitted to the turret. I'm using my Boxford lathe for this, and I have a piece of quarter inch outside diameter brass in the chuck. First of all I centre drill the brass bar, following it with a twist drill to drill quite a long hole down the bar. 
Once I drilled the hole, it was time to use a tailstock die holder to thread the entire length of the bar. And to do this, I engaged back gear in the lathe to slow it down and threaded the piece of brass bar under power. Anything to save time. Now I need to part off three equally sized thread adapters. I'm cleaning the edges with a file first and here I'm using a twist drill to just catch the end before it falls into the chip tray. I thank the viewer for the advice telling me how to do this but I've been doing it for 50 years so I am aware of this procedure, I use it all the time. But often, for the sake of the video, I don't put my massive hand into the shot. Although I have to for this job, I'm re-threading the PM Research fittings so they will fit on my quarter by 40 threads, which as far as I'm aware are a different thread angle to the ones used in the USA. Here I'm doing a dry run to find out what thickness of shim washers I need to make the valves point in the right direction. And once I've found the correct shim washers, I use some Loctite 542 to seal the threads, and here's the more or less finished job. I don't know why the centre tap is a slightly different colour to the others, but once all of the parts have heated up, they will soon tarnish. All I need to do now is fit the turret to the Stuart steam tap on top of the boiler. I'm using the original union nut for the main tap and the taper cone, plus a small piece of pipe from PM Research. The piece of brass pipe is going to be more rigid than using a copper pipe. I silver soldered the parts together and made a nut for the end, and this is what the component now looks like. I used some Loctite 542 on the thread, fitted the part to the main turret block, and tightened the lock nut to hold everything in place. This is what it looks like fitted to the boiler tap. And if anyone's thinking, well that doesn't look very strong, please bear in mind that this steam turret is going to be rigidly piped to the two steam engines in the plant. All I need to do now is fit the pipe adapters. I'm not going to make threaded adapters for this, I'm going to use commercial fittings. So before I do that, I'm going to re-thread the holes in the PM Research steam taps. What I need to do next is machine one end of these commercial fittings down a little bit, so they fit into the steam taps. And finally, with the help of some Loctite 542, here is the finished turret. And that concludes the episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.